Okay, well, thank you everybody uh, for joining us today for uh, another one of our virtual Lunch and Learns. And first of all, I wanted to say a happy Earth Day to everybody. You know, we didn't really know the timing on this for Earth Day uh, when we first lined this out, but it's really a uh, great subject for Earth Day. And I'll tell you one of the things I was most uh, happy about and seeing the people who signed up and seeing the people that are coming on to listen to this session is we've got both people from ag and landscape that are here to, uh, to learn about uh, satellite imaging. And uh, that's really exciting to me because uh, when, when I think about it and when I think about Earth Day, I think, you know, it's all of us joining forces. It's going to be a solution that uh, we all pitch in to do. So seeing that many people and from both industries is, uh, is really exciting. So, uh, so thank you all. Um, I wanted to first introduce uh, uh, Jeff Toole uh, this, this afternoon. Uh, you know, Jeff, somebody I've worked with, uh, gosh, I hate to say it, Jeff, for like 20 years now. Uh, I, I've uh, worked with you or uh, been in the industry with you. Jeff and I uh, served on the Irrigation Association Board of Directors at the same time and uh, more recently here at uh, Jane Irrigation. And uh, Jane uh, and, and Jeff's always struck me as somebody who's really been leading technology wherever he's been. Uh, now that he's heading up our um, Jane Logic and Jane Monitoring and Control Group, uh, it's really exciting to see all the great things he's doing over there. I know uh, lots of people are learning from him and he's taking this uh, message of water conservation forward. So I think we're really lucky to, uh, to have Jeff uh, on the call uh, or on the Lunch and Learn today. I just want to make mention before I turn it over to Jeff that uh, I've got the chat up and, and working. I'll be moderating the call uh, this afternoon. So type your questions into the uh, chat. And when we see the questions and we have an appropriate time uh, to ask the questions, I'll be asking those questions and kind of moderating that discussion. So uh, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Jeff. Jeff. Thank you, Richard, and I certainly enjoyed uh, working with you over the years as well, and um, it's, it's exciting. I know these times are, are a bit challenging, but it's exciting to, uh, to use this venue, and I wanted to thank you also for the great job you've been doing, you know, hosting the, the Gene series of webinars uh, during this time, so really, yeah. really appreciate that. Thank you. I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, let me say that I hope everyone is healthy and staying safe. Uh, during these these challenging times and um, we have a lot of exciting and informative content today to, to share with you all so I'm gonna jump right into it we've got a pretty full full agenda you know I really believe this might be the best gene monitoring and control webinar yet uh, we have a special guest presenter today who I'll introduce in just a minute and it's certainly not taken away from any of the prior presenters. I just think uh, today is, is pretty unique and there's some really good, good stuff. Um, as everyone knows, Jane has been a leader in ag technology for several years now. I believe today's topic on using satellite-based analytics uh, for very specific ag applications is on the leading edge of, of what we're doing. We're not just throwing a gigabyte of images uh, at our users and asking them to figure it out on their own. You know, we've we've really worked closely with a number of large and small growers over the last 18 uh, months or so uh, to refine our satellite-based services into what I'll say are efficient, uh, user-friendly decision tools uh, that I promise um, you will say it will save you a time, uh, water, and ultimately uh, money. And you'll you'll hear more about that uh, today from our from our speaker. The two key products we'll talk about today are HyperView and HyperGrow. Uh, these names were chosen very specifically uh, for the application they uniquely serve. So I'm going to just just very very briefly give a little bit of an introduction on that. So HyperView is based on NDVI or plant, the plant vigor measurement. Um, the word view in this case represents really an unprecedented look at your crops. And I say look, quote unquote look. And today you'll get the details and see some real examples of how HyperView helps growers watch, watch over their fields by seeing changes in the field well before the human eye can and providing easy to understand alerts for quick responses before crop or yield, yield losses can, can occur. 
So really with Hyperview, you wanna think of this as your eye in the sky. <clears throat> on HyperGrow, uh, on the other hand, it's really a tool designed specifically to assist in the growing process. HyperGrow provides crop evapotranspiration or ETC, which very simply stated is a measurement of the water consumed in the field. So using observed ETC, the grower, the grower knows the water consumed um, in each field for each crop and therefore how much water to replenish. It's really about precisely irrigating to eliminate uh, over underwatering. And we talked a little bit about that, or I talked a little bit about that during the uh, precision irrigation uh, webinar. So in a nutshell, these two services help keep watch for vigor progression and changes and provide accurate measurements of how, ir uh, how much irrigation um, is needed based on uh, the observed plant responses. Okay, before I steal any more of our guest's thunder, allow me to introduce uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Sumer Johal, who is the founder and CEO of AgriLogix. Uh, Mr. Johal is a seasoned business leader with over two decades of experience in building and managing technology-based ventures across multiple in industries and uh, geographies. Sumer actually grew up in an agriculture family in Punjab, India, and he later earned a BS and master's in computer science and electrical engineering from MIT. So it's a little, little known school uh, that some of you might have heard of. So after MIT, Sumer started his career in operations, research, and decision support at Analog Devices, or ADI. And at ADI, Mr. Joe Hall designed and implemented an industry-first real-time factory scheduling system that improved productivity, reduced cycle time, and increased throughput. After ADI, Mr. Joe Hall led several ventures over the next 15 years using data analytics for decision support systems at both private and publicly traded companies in the U.S. and around the world. Then, in early 2013, Samir founded AgriLogix. And AgriLogix is a data infrastructure company designed with the intention of making it easy for food enterprises across supply chains to improve their efficiency and asset value via data-informed decision-making. Today, several category-leading fresh food companies are using AgriLogix digital platform across multiple nodes of the supply chain and across multiple business functions. So that's a, it's a great introduction. Samir has done a lot. And Samir, I'm really thankful you're joining us today. And uh, I'd like to pass the presentation over to you. Thank you, uh, Richard. And thank you, Jeff, uh, for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, uh, for you know, your time today and joining. Um, I hope you can all hear me clearly. Uh, Richard, Jeff, all good? All right. Yep. So uh, let's jump right into it. As uh, Jeff mentioned, um, you know, I'm, I'm delighted to present uh, a couple of products that we are working in close collaboration as a partner with Jan Irrigation. Um, and the, the purpose of these products is really to help uh, have data be uh, of help uh, to our growers um, and our asset managers so that they can uh, improve their day-to-day -day operations. So with that, I'll jump right into it. Um, a little bit about us uh, at AgriLogix. Uh, uh, AgriLogix creates uh, data on individual uh, you know, land parcels or land polygons, as we like to call them. Uh, so we really provide field-specific or field-bespoke analytics um, using a whole host of uh, information sources from satellite uh, uh, sources and spectral analysis to weather and soils and hydrology, air quality, et cetera. With past models to provide insights that are uh, data driven uh, to our, our, our customers and users. Uh, on the left of the slide, you'll see all the pieces of land and, and fields that we're working closely with Jan Irrigation. Every one of those polygons is, is in California, a Jan Logic, um, uh, uh, managed and monitored uh, field. Uh, and so you can see the big spread. Uh, we are over uh, 100,000 acres in California alone with Genlogic uh, and over 300,000 acres across the Western United States and some parts of the U.S. Uh, just with Jan. 
uh, on computation. And then uh, separate from Jan, we also compute uh, close to uh, uh, a million acres total uh, every, every day uh, for uh, uh, field bespoke analytics. So uh, we can do this at scale. Uh, and, uh, and that's really unique about our companies that were the back end engine. Think of us as sort of the Intel inside, if you will. Um, so with that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about scale because uh, as I can see, a lot of people are joining from all over the world, um, many parts of the US. And uh, you know, while we're really focusing on California right now, uh, our technology and our provisioning with Jan has the roadmap that we uh, envision will really serve the entire globe. And here you can see um, the satellite uh, uh, image uh, footprints of one of the satellites. Each one of those uh, red squares that you see uh, is a satellite uh, footprint. Uh, and the satellite sort of goes ka-chum, 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 ka -chum across the globe. And uh, you know, we're computing every single pixel of every single footprint uh, across the whole, whole globe. So it's a very scalable system and we can provide these insights anywhere on the planet with very high uh, uh, resolution and accuracy. Um, really the motivation behind why we're doing this is really to provide the level of efficiency that is driven by cloud computing. Um, and you know, satellites and weather systems uh, across the globe uh, are being measured in unprecedented uh, ways uh, today compared to even five years ago. Uh, and there are now more than 300 satellites that are, um, you know, transmitting the, uh, the information and a, a lot of the data is all available, but it's very hard to use. And what we've done is taken that data and sort of made it useful for a few very specific contexts like irrigation and, and crop stress. What I want to sort of drive here is that this efficiency is really driven because you have the sort of reliability and accuracy of satellites. Uh, and sure, there's lots of uh, uh, challenges to overcome like cloud cover and things like that. Uh, but uh, the fact is that these satellites are uh, completely uh, you know, managed by international and national organizations. Uh, they're highly reliable. They don't require human intervention uh, necessarily to, uh, uh, from any, anybody on the ground in localized areas to manage like drones and things like that. Um, so the reliability and accuracy of satellite imagery is, is very, very important. And that translates to, um, you know, its, its usefulness. Uh, also the resolution. Uh, so as the number of satellites have grown, we've now gotten to a revisit time of less than five days. Um, some places it's almost a day because the satellite swaths overlap. Um, and so uh, the resolution in terms of both time and space the revisit rate and also the, the actual resolution of the pixels of the satellite, they're down to about uh, a 10 meter pixel uh, from the public satellites. And that translates to roughly a, a two or three trees on a horticulture land, piece of land, depending on the, the spacing that we use. So it's pretty high resolution given that we can do it globally. Uh, and that translates to a lower cost. I mean, we'll talk about cost at the, at the very end but you should know that and be you know, really happy to hear that this is extremely affordable. And that's actually really important for food and agriculture because agriculture is not an elastic good. You cannot re keep increasing prices uh, uh, you know, as demand grows. So as the population is growing um, and the world is facing challenges like we are right now, food is extremely important. And that cost has to be so low so that the value can really be um, you know, taken in and, and and can provide that sort of use to the farmers. Yes. So that's so, what so, Samir, I have a quick question. So these satellites are really government owned or privately owned. Uh, they're already up and, and being used for other things too. So is right. this just an add on to, to what they're already doing? Yes, so essentially these satellites are run by NASA as well as the European Union. Uh, and uh, now even India and other countries are joining in, but uh, you know, so the, the more mature satellite programs are run by NASA and the European Union. And these satellites are used for hundreds and hundreds of different purposes. They're the data provided by these satellites is publicly available. Um, and so what we do is add an extra layer of interpretation on this data, which makes that data, uh, we take that data, make it uniquely, uh, uh, analyze it uniquely for that particular field 
uh, given uh, our, our customers' locations. And so analyzing that information, providing insights for a specific field is something that's where we add value. But the satellites are something run by the government and we don't, yeah, we don't own them. It's not our, they're not, not our. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. Um, so jumping right in, uh, uh, Jeff mentioned uh, the two products we're going to talk about today. One is called Hyperview and one is called Hypergrow. Uh, and Hyperview is exactly what it sounds like. Um, the, the key word here is the view part, which is a field specific crop stress monitoring system where we're doing this all the time for your crops for any field anywhere on the planet. And you get to see the sort of alerts, the system generates alerts and other types of analytical output for uh, the grower to see where the crop is stressed and by how much. And our uh, understanding of uh, growers, uh, you know, uh, information and growers' lives is that their fields are, are, are spread out. And a lot of times uh, growers uh, may not know where to look uh, and a lot of times the stress is not visible to the human eye. And so through spectral analysis of satellite data uh, and then adding a layer of analytics on top, Hyperview aims to really monitor, think of it like a home security monitoring system except for your fields. It's really monitoring crop stress and sort of alerting you if there's a problem somewhere on the field. That's the idea. So let's jump right into what it is. Uh, um, it's a... Uh, AI powered analytical uh, image analytics uh, 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 product for individual field boundary uh, analysis anywhere on the planet. We actually analyze this every two to five days, depending on where it is. Um, and the resolution, as I mentioned, is um, 10 meter pixel, which is uh, 40 data points per acre. Um, so, which is pretty high resolution. I mean, there are some images, for example, in India that are just one acre. Uh, field plots, which are very small, but we can still get 40 data points on one acre, which is quite, quite good. Um, we look at, at uh, the normalized uniformity um, uh, so that uh, we can create the exact um, uh, amount of risk to the yield, both in location and in terms of amount. And the usefulness of this, as you'll see, is really to um, enable, uh, you know, the the, allow the grower to sort of know where to look. Uh, and so it allows for some actionable intelligence through non-human monitoring. This is a system that monitors continuously without any human intervention and flags an issue, uh, which may be a pest pressure issue. It could be a nutrient deficiency issue. It could be an irrigation equipment issue. It could be a soil issue. Um, it doesn't tell you what issue it is. It just tells you there's an issue and then, you know, allows you to sort of direct your focus in that area. And you'll see these pictures uh, uh, again and again as I go through this on the right hand side. Let me just briefly explain what they are. They are an, in, all of this is actually a single field. And uh, on the top left is the NDVI or the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which a lot of people uh, probably already know of. Um, a few things here we actually provide the vigor about, uh, amount. So as the, the field sort of goes into its growing cycle and comes down. You can see this, it goes from red to yellow to green and back. Uh, on the right, uh, top right, is uh, our uh, AI enabled view of this. So essentially what we do is use some um, sophisticated logic to zoom in and create a contrast um, in a very narrow range of, of values for the NDVI so you can really see where your stress is and light green is or red is bad and, and dark green and green is good, as you can see from the bigger chart on the right. Uh, and this is the same field, it's just a different view on the top right. Now, on the bottom two images, those are really where a lot of the insights come in, even though the top right image is also quite useful in terms of looking at where the non-uniformities might be. But the bottom two images are very interesting. The, the bottom left image is an image uh, where we compare every pixel to its value to the previous image, which is typically a week ago. And so you can see here, it's comparing that field from you know, uh, 721 to 716. So it's about you know, five days ago. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, every pixel is measured and any pixel that is not either above 10% change or below 10% change is just white. So there's no, all the white spaces where things have not changed by plus or minus 10%. Uh, and then anything that has changed by either above 10%, which is green, or below minus 10%, which is red, is, is actually shown. So we take out all the pixels and give you an image that only shows the, the pixels that are compared to what they were a week ago or five days ago, um, uh, gone up by 10% or gone below 10%. Uh, and that's very useful, as you'll see in this case, uh, you know, uh, you can see that there's a few pixels uh, that are plus and minus, but nothing to worry about because those things are just the boundaries of the field and maybe there's a path through the field, etc. But on the bottom right, we do the same thing, but we compare it to a, 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 the image of the same field four weeks ago uh, or four images ago. So essentially, um, it's comparing a temporal pixel-based resolution uh, comparison to what the, the, the pixel value was for that particular location in the field. So every pixel has been compared to what its value was uh, back in time. And if it changes by plus 10% or minus 10%, uh, then we show it in the green and, and reds respectively. Uh, so Samir, I have, a, I have a couple of good questions here right now. So uh, first of all, the, uh, the numbers on the right-hand side of the images, uh, what do those show? So these numbers on the top, uh, top two images show the vigor, uh, which is really just a number between zero and one, one being the highest and zero being the lowest. And uh, it shows the number uh, as the crop matures and then it comes back into into its reproductive cycle, that number goes up and then comes down. So it's a natural growing cycle of a plant. Okay, great, thank you. And then for the um, data points, how long of history do we have on those? As long as you've signed up for the service or what, what is that? Yeah, so every week you get one of these for every field. And it's a rolling window of four weeks that we're looking at um, on Hyperview. So we keep a rolling one month window and we look at what the images look like a, a, a month ago, roughly speaking, four images ago. But Samir, okay. we can also, we can, we can also, um, there's historical data in there. We've gone back to 2018, 2019 and run, you know, reports for growers when they wanted to look back. Mm. Uh, yes. To, to try to get some reference point to the, a prior year. Yes, in our servers, we keep the imagery for a few years, but uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, for, for diagnostics, we, we run this for se several growers uh, and look back at what happened last year. But this, the product is really aimed for a weekly report where for every field, you get these four images. And I'm gonna walk you through some of what they look like and what they mean. Um, there's a lot more information that I haven't covered yet, so let me quickly get to that as well. Okay, all right. So, and these images are pushed to me, right? I don't have to do anything. They just send them to me, right? That's right, that's right. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what that is. So, you know, in terms of grower benefits, uh, you know, this is uh, really uh, about labor savings. Um, and, you know, typically when you know where you go, wanna go and take a look, you can save about 10 to 15% of your time, which just translates to money and then also, which is really uh, you know, useful, it's an early warning sign of a possible yield loss where you're not seeing anything, but the spectral uh, change is happening. And, and before things go bad, you can still get back. And we estimate this from field trials and customers to be about 1% to 5% improvement in yield. Um, so those are the two very tangible uh, benefits to this. Uh, and I'm going to go through it fairly quickly uh, in the interest of time, but you know, we can certainly answer questions along the way. This is what the email actually looks like. So you get an email, uh, you register your fields with us. Uh, you get an email every week. It's very simple. There's no new system to learn. Uh, and the email is every row is a field. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of columns here, but the key, and we blacked out the name of the grower here just for uh, privacy, but essentially your, your field names are rows. And the red alerts that you see here are the alerts that are uh, highlighted to, sh to sort of have you, I mean, you can look at any of these reports for any field, but if you have a lot of fields, it may not be easy for you to look at them all, but the alerts allow you to focus in on fields that may need some attention. And so by getting this in an email, if you have a hundred fields, you can just quickly just look through 
and then when you click on any one of these reports, um, it really uh, is what that four, four imagery thing that I was talking about. It has a lot of information. Um, it tells you the actual rigor of the field, it shows you the spatial uniformity. We actually also talk about the number of acres and the percentage that change above 10% and below 10%. Uh, and then we have alerts if there's a problem. So here you can see this particular image. Um, if you look at the top right image, it seems like the, the, the big red blotch that is up on the top right is the area that has a problem. But it turns out that that's just a soil issue. So when you compare the, the vigor for, for uh, last two weeks, or last week and last four weeks, the last week doesn't show any change, but last four weeks shows a change in the bottom uh, you know, right image, uh, in the bottom left piece of that image of the, the southwest portion of that field, it shows the alerts. And if you look at the, the the top images, you see that that area is not necessarily red. So it's, you know, the NDVI is fine, but compared to what it was four weeks ago, it has, it has gone down, whereas the other fields have not. And, you know, your whole field should be working together. And so that is useful information. That's the work of analysis that we add, not just throw image at you and try to let you figure out what happened. Uh, and this is comparing images four weeks ago to, to now. So, it's, it's also temporally how things have changed. And so Samir, um, so I, I simply just have to draw in my uh, fields. Uh, I draw that map in, you help me do that. How, how is that done? How do I get my fields in here? Yeah, so typically uh, our customers work with Jan uh, and, and either they have a KML, KMZ file from Google Earth or a shape file for their fields, or um, they have ranch maps that uh, the, the team at Jan Irrigation can help them draw. And then once uh, the, those, uh, those uh, fields are, the boundaries are digitized, then they're handed off to our servers. Uh, and then this just shows up as an email. End of discussion. Yeah. There's no need for any sensor, nothing on the ground. It's completely automated. Yeah, okay, great. That sounds easy enough, thanks. Yeah. As I mentioned, the time series here is the same field I was showing you earlier, where you see this alert happen. But then if you don't, you know, what you also see is as, time goes by, those fields get more alert, they, they get more red. Uh, and, you know, this could be a, a, a stress situation. In this case, the grower was actually trying to stress their plants um, because right before the harvest or right, you know, the deficit irrigation to create the, the, the hull split. So, um, you know, those management practices can be verified. It's not always just an alert because it's bad. It can also be an alert that shows to you that something is changing, but you may expect it to change. And it's just gratifying to see that change happen. You also want that change to be free, fully uniform. So you can see in the bottom uh, images that the top, uh, you know, the Northwest, sorry, the Northeast side is not as stressed. And maybe you want it more stressed and the, the bottom, uh, the Southwest uh, side is more stressed than the, the north, Northeast of the field. So. Those kinds of non-uniformity issues are flagged through spectral data. I'm gonna quickly go through a few field examples, about four examples before we switch to the second product. Um, here's an example in which case, uh, you know, on the left, this is one customer, on the right, there's another customer. These are different fields. And you can see the alert happening when there's a change on the one week change on the left uh, image, there's, it's all green, but on the, on the four week image, it's, it's actually uh, shows a red. Uh, same thing on, on the uh, uh, you know, right side image. The image shows nice uniform field, but um, there's an alert on the bottom uh, side of the field. Um, and it's an area which is not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty green in the NDVI, but it's changed in, compared to last week. So those are some examples. Here's more examples of what that field looks like. This field on the, uh, on the left, uh, you know, that shows mites. So there was some mite infestation on the top of the field. And you can kind of see that in the red uh, areas. You can actually see the rows of the trees if you think, look closely. Uh, so the resolution is pretty high. And so you see an alert being thrown. On the right side here, uh, you know, all is good. You know, there's no alert. Uh, and that's what you want to see as a grower. Everything is good, even though the field has, you know, non-uniformities in terms of soil issues from an overall change perspective, the field is moving very nicely. 
Uh, and, you know, if you were just to take a look at the NDVI, you'd say, oh, there's a problem, but the grower already knows that the soils there are a little weak. It's sort of relatively speaking, how are they moving? And I think that's what uh, we're trying to show here. Uh, so, uh, again, more examples. Uh, here's an example where, uh, you know, Jan Irrigation is adding value in terms of, you know, knowing about irrigation systems. So here, um, you know, the drip line performance is degraded as you move out from the, you know, irrigation lateral that runs to the middle of the field. And, you know, you can see the sort of vigor in the middle and it falls off as you move towards the ends of the drip lines. Um, so that's something you see visibly here. Um, on the right hand side, there's an example of an undersized pump, um, you know, that has caused, uh, you know, the, this sort of thing to happen and not enough pressure flow to, to properly serve these, these fields that are actually two fields here uh, that are lumped into one polygon. So anyway, there, there are all these, uh, you know, examples that, that we pulled from our customers. Uh, here's another example where there's clearly some issues going on in the field. Um, you know, on the top, on the top field, uh, on the, on the right hand side, there's a field, there's no issue going on, even though there's significant field non-uniformity in terms of soils, uh, from a vigor perspective, it's totally fine. So, you know, hopefully through these, uh, uh, you'll, you'll have seen that, you know, not only is it a really useful thing to see, uh, once, but over time, you can actually see your, your fields, uh, the effects of drying down the field during, you know, hull split and harvest. This is, a, again, some good examples from last year um, where, you know, you can see how much of the field is under stress. Uh, here, they're trying to stress the field on the right-hand side. Um, and, you know, this field is also flood irrigated, so you can see the trees north drive more quickly uh, and incur more stress. At the bottom, you're not seeing that stress at all. And this you would not see from NDVI. If somebody just gave you an NDVI image, which uh, uh, you know is a spectral image from the satellite, you wouldn't see that. So that's the added value that you see through Hyperview. Uh, Samir, so, do I do, do I mostly see? I mean, am I going to see a pr uh, problem every week, or a lot of times am I just going to see everything's okay? What what's been your experience there? Uh, our experience has been that once the the the, the steady state uh, of the crop season starts, that's the May, June, July, August, September time frame. Uh, you know, most of the fields should look like this. Uh, they should be all clear, with the one or two exceptions, uh, and that's been our experience. In the beginning of the season, as the crops are starting, there may be some cloud issues, so you may see some false alerts. Uh, we're not guaranteeing that every alert is going to be, you know, the right alert. Some of them are false alerts. But I'd rather get a false alert than no alert at all. Right. Uh, and, you know, what's the most that, I, that I've uh, lost is, you know, maybe a second or two of clicking on a field in, a, in, my, in my pajamas if I'm sitting at night or in the morning looking at my field. So it's really, uh, you know, low, low cost in terms of your time commitment to look at things. Right. I, I want some inexpensive insurance when I think about how much, you know, I have invested in that field. And uh, this right. certainly gives me that. Now, with something like uh, grapes, right, where there could be a cover crop in between the vines, is there a way to determine which is, uh, uh, which is the grape vine and what's the cover crop? No, we don't do that discrimination in terms of uh, discriminating the pixels uh, from each other. Uh, but you'll see the vigor uh, be different anyway. So, you know, cover crops are not going to have the vigor that your grape vines are going to have. And so you'll see that in the NDVI vigor. And so, uh, you know, because it will be between the plus minus 10, it will probably just get wiped out and, and, and you know, they won't interfere with your grape vines. But uh, that's what our experience has been. But, you know, it depends on what kind of cover crops. It depends on what kind of season. Um, we're, not, we're not doing anything to make that change. It's just that cover crops and the vines have different spectral, um, you know, uh, signatures. And so that, that kind of works itself out. Yeah, great, thank you. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna jump into the second product, uh, which is HyperGrow. Um, so this is, uh, this is our flagship product. It actually provides field-specific uh, evapotranspiration and irrigation decision analytics um, to you know, tell you how much water your fields are actually drinking. Uh, and it's, it's much more beyond the view, as the, the name suggests, it's about growing. So it's about you know, your irrigation decision, but also a decision around the uniformity of your fields as they're growing. Um, so with that, I'll jump right into it. Um, the key here is, you know, what if we could directly measure the plant's water use without needing any in-ground sensor, with just the location uh, of the field? 
Uh, and, you know, it sounds really great. And, and so the idea here is what if we could directly observe the plant and use the plant as the sensor uh, and use that through our cloud to compute the evapotranspiration. And, uh, you know, sounds almost too good to be true, uh, but it turns out and that it has been true and is true. Uh, it's just a matter of putting that computation there together. And uh, this is really how it works. So you have a plant that has a plant response. So as the plant grows, its stomata changes as the plant is uh, 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 you know, subjected to its growing cycle, um, its spectral uh, emission actually changes. And that spectral emission can be observed very clearly from the satellites, which is just crazy if you think about it. You know, you're really observing plants directly uh, from, from space. Uh, and it's a unique spectral signature which talks about their phenological progression, their photosynthetic transpiration and the health. And that translates to a very knowledgeable, meaningful information which then can be combined with the weather information, which also we get from multiple weather sources, uh, both national as well as state-based weather sources, and create a weather estimate on an hourly basis on each field. So when you combine the two uh, using public data and models with some modifications, we're able to create uh, a mosaic stitching, if you will, of what the plant is drinking minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, uh, and after we do some sort of sophisticated analytics on it, like uh, filtering out cloud cover issues, uh, calibrating it so, so that the flux calculations are properly weighted, um, we're able to compute the ET, uh, the actual consumptive demand of the plant on a day-to-day on a -day basis. And then we deliver it on a weekly basis uh, to the grower. So that's really how it works. It's really uh, a, a, a testament to how far we've come with cloud computing. Uh, and uh, it's very, very useful. Uh, we validated this information with a whole bunch of sensors over the last few years. We've been working with lots of growers, uh, both row crop and permanent crop growers. And here you see our, our comparison to a on-ground uh, sensor for ET, whereas the uh, other estimates fall way short. Our, our numbers were within a few percentage points. On the left-hand side, on the right-hand side is an actual irrigation being done by a grower a top grower in California Central Valley where the green line is uh, the uh, information we're providing them with what their ET is on a week to week basis on that one field across all their fields. And the blue line is how much water they're actually putting on the field. Uh, and we've actually learned this has now been happening for a few years and their yields are actually slightly up even not only are they saving water, they're actually growing better. Uh, and so that's really uh, uh, what this is all about. Um, uh, details just like Hyperview, um, this uh, we also send by just a simple email. There's no new system to grow, to learn. Uh, all you get is an email. Uh, it looks just like this. It has a table in your email and in the table is every row is a particular field. Uh, and it tells, the numbers tell you what the ET is. Uh, it tells you uh, what the uh, highest uh, ET in the field is, so the top 10% of your, of your pixels, what, what are they drinking? How much are they drinking uh, in terms of inches uh, or acre inches over acre, whichever way you prefer. Uh, and so that's the main number is number of inches. This is for one week. So this is from past week to this week. Uh, it also tells you your uniformity uh, across the field. And this is something we added this year. It tells you the year to date, how much water has the field drank so far? Uh, and how much did it drink the previous year? And so is there a big change? This is from 2019. So it's comparing 2019 to 2018. This year it's comparing 2020 to 2019. Uh, and it tells you, you know, whether it's up or down percentage wise. So this is more for permanent crops. It tells you whether you're ahead or behind from a cumulative perspective. And if you click on any one of these images on the, the links, the, the field links, you get the image of the field, which tells you this is actually every pixel is the ET of that pixel, the amount of water that you're drinking. And it tells you what the uniformity is. So, you know, I wanna walk you through some of these uh, uh, examples, but this is also delivered weekly. It's extremely useful to tell you how much water your field is drinking. And based on that provides your baseline 
to irrigate with that amount of water. You may want to irrigate a little bit more or a little bit less. We're not saying how much you should put on. We're simply saying this is what the field is drinking. And so think about it like a bank account. This tells you how much what money was withdrawn. So you may choose, choose to put it all in or you may choose to put half of it or more of it into the field, depending on your situation. Uh, but knowing how much was withdrawn really allows you uh, that sort of insight that is extremely useful. I also want to mention that we add a whole Excel spreadsheet attached to your email. So this email, we try to keep it very simple, uh, even though there's a few numbers here, uh, but there's a whole bunch of numbers we attach in an Excel sheet, which looks like, you know, this is one of the sheets. There are many uh, worksheets within that Excel uh, file that we attach to every email. Uh, and then this is one of those worksheets which tells you field by field what your water budget is in terms of your consumptive demand um, and across the whole year. So you can plan for how many inches will my fields need typically across the whole year, month by month. And this is very important for water stressed areas like California where there's groundwater legislation and you really have uh, to make sure you have numbers to support your irrigation decisions and uh, these are very very useful numbers these come from your fields also uh, just historical information on the average of the last two years so that's what we do here uh, and so the benefits of this product are really the primary benefit is just saving water water is not free on typically in california you know if you have a, a uh an average cost of water is actually way north of 250 dollars an acre foot I'll use that number because at different parts of the valley, it's different. Um, but you know, $250 an acre foot times four acre feet per uh, field typically uh, is about $1,000 an acre just for water, okay? That's just water cost, not cost of labor or anything else, pumping, nothing, just cost of water. And on top of that, if you have a yield swing, you could be looking at you know, a 10% yield swing which is on a $10,000 an acre revenue on a you know, high performing almond field, you could look at $1,000 an acre on yield swing. So you're talking between $1,000 to $2,000 per acre that's at stake here. And uh, as you'll see in the very end, the, the ROI on this, this is so cost effective. The ROI here is typically over 10X. So it's a no brainer. Is essentially on a price perspective, we, we call it irrigation by wire. It's homage to, uh, even though this is completely wireless and, and uh, remotely sensed, it's an homage to the old aerospace guys that I worked with way, way back in grad school. So, uh, uh, you know, fly by wire, if you will, that's the, the idea. Um, and so this is also very useful for uh, groundwater legislation like SIGMA, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act in California, where it gives the grower the ability to defend against fines that may be imposed by the, the sustainability uh, um, agency uh, because uh, people have different data sets and it's always good for growers to have their own data set. We highly advocate for that. Um, and, uh, you know, typically we see that if there's a, a wrongful fine that people have been assessed by the GSA, they, they can get a big ROI on that as well. That's sort of uh, 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 local to California. Um, here are some examples of what that looks like for real customers. Um, this is one of uh, Janlogic's uh, principles, so we, we can show the name, it's, uh, Larry Rompal. So this is his images. You can see here that not only is the ET uh, useful information, you can see in the third column of data, but the uniformity is actually different for different fields. So. If you look at field Barstow, which is on the left-hand side, which is one of the rows here, you'll see that the top of the field is not irrigated as well, or doesn't have as much ET as the bottom of the field. And so the uniformity is only 63 uh, uh, or 64, 63.76. Another field Dickinson has the same issue. And these fields are likely on a slope or there's some issue that's causing this uh, ET to be non-uniform. There are other fields like this Jameson field, which has a uniformity of 96. Uh, and look how beautiful this looks. It's, it's not just um, uniform, it's also dark blue, which means the ET is very high. So, uh, you know, clearly there are changes field to field, and this allows, uh, you know, our growers to see which fields they need to pay attention to. Uh, here's another example of 
you know, the dynamics of the same field. So this is the same customer uh, one week to the next. The left uh, is one week uh, where they had rain. So the second column is 0.42 is, that's the amount of rain they had. So we actually captured the precipitation on each field um, by our analytics as well. Uh, and uh, the third field is the, the third column is the ET, which is 0.95 in the top row. If you look at the same field the next week, there was no precip, there was no precipitation. So the ET, because it was hotter, went up from you know 0.95 inches to 1.09 inches, which is week to week, it's gone up by 15%. So if you're using the same logic to irrigate one week to the next, you know, it's just not good practice. You can save a lot of water and actually have your fields be healthier. And you can take advantage of the fact that you've got 0.42 inches of free water. So, you know, as the weather changes, as the, 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 the rain happens or doesn't happen, uh, each year is going to change dramatically, 10, 20, 25% week to week. And it's that juggling act that we allow growers to, to perform with precision week to week, or that we hope to allow growers to perform uh, week to week through this, through this product. So that's what this shows. Here's another example of the same customer on the same um, uh, week. So this is relatively, relatively recent, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, last week actually. And these two fields are actually right next to each other, Mitchell Site 2 and Mitchell Site 1. And you can see that Mitchell Site 2 has a non-uniformity of, of, of or uniformity rate, a number of 84, and, and uh, Mitchell 1 has 91. And you can see on the right-hand side of the field, there's a lot more stress on ET uh, in Mitchell 2 than in Mitchell 1. On the left part of the field, they're about the same. So again, there's something going on. If you were to look at these two fields with the naked eye, you know, the human eye cannot discern this. Uh, and so these are the small changes that can save, save yield and give you money in your pocket. Uh, here's another example of the same customer, two different fields, same day. Uh, you know, one field is uh, next to the other. They look identical. They're growing the same crop. Why is one's uniformity uh, high and low, uh, you know, that's up to them to figure out, but certainly this could be younger almonds. So, you know, this is more mature almonds. So you see the ETV a little higher, a lot of darker blue, uh, but the uniformity number is low too. So there's something in the top left corner that's going on in this field that's causing that uniformity to go down. So uh, I think, uh, you know, those are some of the examples. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of close with a couple of uh, very key Customers, this was a large grower in 2016 that we did trials with and within a year, they were able to save over 35% of their water. The green lines are the lines that, uh, that we are uh, talking about in terms of ET and the red lines are what they were using before, which was a generic number for almonds uh, in California. So you know, clearly there's a lot of money to be saved here. Uh, and Alan and Matt Scroggs, one of the top uh, irrigation uh, consultants and growers in Kern County in California, uh, are uh, uh, reference customers of ours. And they, their endorsement means a lot to us because they've been in the field for decades and has PhDs in irrigation science from UC Davis. And, you know, uh, we're, we're the sort of computer guys and sort of math guys. But then these guys, uh, uh, you know, acknowledge and, and uh, refer to our service being able to help them it really makes our heart glow. Uh, so we thank Alan and Matt for being uh, you know, champions of this. Uh, and so the question also is why now? You know, between sustainability for the planet and for your local ecosystems, uh, between uh, regulatory compliance, which is required by law, and between efficiency, which means saving money and putting more money in your pocket, all those reasons are valid reasons. In fact, coming all together, they're all good reasons why we should use this product. So that's why we advocate for it. Here's the great, great news um, in terms of pricing. Um, we're very transparent in terms of our pricing. Um, so this is uh, Hyperview. Uh, we offer Hyperview at an incredibly low price of just 25 cents an acre a month. Uh, so it's $3 an acre a year. Uh, and for that, you get 50, almost 50 reports, um, you know, typically once a week, there's a few weeks there's too much cloud cover and things like that. Uh, and it's a monthly billing. Uh, so it's really, really low cost. Uh, and HyperGrow, which is the ET product, is the uh, $1 an acre a month or $12 an acre a year, which also is incredibly uh, cost effective. And that $1 includes HyperView. So if you get HyperGrow, 
Uh, we bundle Hyper-V with it. Uh, and the trial offer we have going on right now is that you onboard your fields, you can get free reports until the end of May. And after that, it'll start uh, billing you. And it's unlimited acres, so you can do as many acres as you'd like. With that, take any questions. Wow, um, that was really great, uh, so, Samir. Uh, I really appreciate all that information. I love the, uh, <clears throat> the comparisons, too, of uh, field to field and what I can learn from that. So uh, uh, we had a couple of quick questions, and uh, uh, I want to ask uh, some others myself. But uh, one of the questions came up. Can I see this on any mobile device, too? Yes. You can see this on any mobile device. Uh, it's an HTML email, so it renders on any mobile device. Uh, doesn't require any app, nothing. It's just a simple email. You can okay. get email on your mobile device. You can get this. Yeah, okay. All right, great. And then we had a couple more people asking about the uh, earlier question, the cover crop and, and the grapes. And so yeah. as the, if, you're, if you're irrigating with drip irrigation, the grapes are going to be having good vigor numbers and that cover crop, you know, is going to die out. What, what will you see on the chart then? Um, so, you know, in the charts, you can see those cover crops just disappear. They'll be white on hyper view and hyper grow because it's about the entire amount of water you're putting in will account for both the cover crops and your wine grapes taking up a little bit of water in the right proportion. So, you know, in both cases, the accuracy and integrity uh, will be maintained. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the answer to your question on that. Yeah. And, and then, you know, a couple of times you said, okay, you're having a problem in this portion of your field or time to get out there. You know where to go look, right? So what, what are typically some of the problems people are, are finding? Well, it can be a whole host of things, you know, broken emitters uh, typically could be one problem. They could have uh, pest pressure. You know, we had one customer had uh, a case of, uh, you know, stink bug. Uh, for his tomatoes. Uh, we have uh, navel orange worm problems that cause stress on one side of the field. There's a lot of different pest pressure uh, aspects. Uh, it can also be, you know, areas where, where uh, there's a slope um, and, you know, you need to change the emitter settings for those slopes. Uh, and, and that's where you can work with Jan Irrigation and, and their consultants in the field to sort of help you. Um, but it, you know, it could be a whole host of things. Yeah, so I guess the key here is um, it tells me where to look right away. It tells you where to look, yeah. It tells you where to look. It's directed scouting. Yeah. And I should also mention that you know, this uh, information is not just for customers of JanLogic. If you are, that's great. If you aren't, you can still work with Jan and provide your skew boundaries and get this information through an email. It does not have to go through. We have both pathways open to customers. Uh, and in both cases, we partner with Jan. So it's it's... It's totally okay to to uh, to be able to subscribe to this, even if you're not a Genlogic customer. Yeah. So we had another question here about: uh, Has this ever been used on uh, turf graphs uh, applications? Um, yes, we have. In our early days, uh, we used to do a lot of work with turf uh, in California. You know, that's been taken on by the utilities a lot. But yeah, it, it should work just fine on turf as well. Um, and uh, you know, for example, we do a lot of work with alpha alpha grass. So the grasses work just fine. Yeah, so it should be okay. Okay, great. Uh, th thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, any uh, any questions or uh, additional comments you'd like to make before we wrap up today? You know, maybe one last um, comment or question I would say to Samir, and I know the answer, but I want everyone in the, the group to benefit from the answer as well. And Samir, we've been asked in the past, you know, I've specifically been asked about why don't we do ET forecasting? You know, why don't we try to predict the future yeah. instead of you know, using the replenishment method? So I, I know you've got such a great answer on that and it's super useful. Yeah. So if you could comment on that. Sure, sure. Yeah, so you know, irrigation science as uh, we have seen at UC Davis and, uh, and other practitioners of that in California, what they've, I'm not an irrigation science guy, but uh, certainly what I've, we've, we've seen is that there's a lag between when you irrigate and when the plants transpire. And that lag uh, typically is uh, over several days because the, the infiltration rate and the, the, the water takes some time to infiltrate into the uh, soil and the roots to take it up and then evapotranspire. So 
what you want to do uh, in irrigation is always be looking at two key things. One is to be accurate and not be guessing. So if you guess, you could under or over uh, uh, irrigate. Uh, and the second is to know about this lag. So the lag is really when you apply water, let's say you were expecting a really hot week. Uh, and in anticipation of that hot week, you put in a bunch of water more than, than what you think you need to put because it's gonna be a really hot week. So there are two scenarios. One scenario is uh, that hot week doesn't happen and you wasted a bunch of water. And another scenario is that it's either hotter uh, than what you anticipated and you put too little water. In both cases, your guess looking forward, because it's field by field, is not going to be yield the more accurate information in terms of what you want to apply. So that's the first thing is that forecasts are not very accurate all the time field ba on a field by field basis. The second is whatever you're applying this week is really in response to the ET last week, because whatever you'll apply this week is going to reach the soil and the plant within a few days because of the infiltration rate. So essentially soil uh, you know, scientists and irrigation scientists always advocate for looking at what you lost last week and put that back in uh, and not try to guess up or down uh, too much based on what you anticipate the weather might or might not be this coming week. Uh, so that's the real reason and, and the scenarios that play out are people either end up over irrigating and losing water uh, and money or end up under irrigating uh, because they think it's gonna be cold and they don't irrigate enough. Uh, and if you think it's gonna be cold and you don't irrigate enough, you're, you're leaving the, the plant to starve because it's basically accessing water that you irrigated last week and it doesn't have access to that. So it's this lag time plus the uh, gaps in forecasting accuracy that uh, necessitate that the irrigation be done from a replenishing what you did last week. Um, I will add one thing is that you may want to deliberately do over or under um, based on what you replenished last, based on what you depleted last week. Uh, if you're flushing the field or if you're doing some other crop practice that requires a deficit irrigation or something, but that's, that's very different than kind of normally irrigating to a forecast rather than irrigating to an actual. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, Samir and Jeff, thank you guys so much for this great presentation today. Uh, maybe we missed a couple questions. If we have, we'll reach out to you individually and, and get those answered. Uh, and I also want to say that, um, you know, it, it's interesting, right? You just spent your lunch time with us on Wednesday to talk about satellite imaging and water. So uh, if you've done that, you know, you're, you're definitely into water, right? So, uh, uh, so for those of you who just even have an inkling of an interest in what the satellite imaging is going to look like, I really do encourage you to take a look, even if it's just from a uh, I'm curious standpoint, because uh, we're into it too. And uh, we love like-minded people like uh, all of us on this call. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. Again, uh, Samir, Jeff, thank you guys very much. Uh, appreciate that today. Thank and, you, uh, Richard, thank you. Yeah, and then uh, Friday, Friday for our virtual lunch and where we're gonna have some uh, growers from the Central Valley talking about uh, the season so far. Uh, what uh, what challenges they're having and uh, what they're doing about it. So a little out of irrigation, uh, irrigation will be part of it, but we'll be out of irrigation a little bit. So anyway, thank you guys very much for joining. And uh, again, happy Earth Day, and we'll see you guys all soon. Thanks. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you.